So change is definitely scary. Change is uh, something that uh, challenges us to take a look at ourselves and decide how we're going to embrace that change. Are we going to let it control us and make us fearful? Uh, or are we going to take it as an opportunity to learn something new, to get to, new, get to know new people, to explore different things? So change can definitely be scary. It can definitely be hard to deal with. Uh, but it also gives us a chance to build our skills to be able to deal with change and deal with adversity. Coming to high school for our freshmen this year and for our new students is also a big change. Uh, we certainly are not the middle school. We have a different schedule. We have more classes that freshmen are going to be going to and changing to. Uh, we have different uh, expectations and different rules. And so they need to learn all of that. You need to learn all of that. Um, and you do have uh, a fantastic group of teachers and staff here to help you learn that, to help support you with that. Uh, so please be open to change, reach out to the teachers, talk with them, ask them questions, and uh, especially get to know your advisor. Your advisor is someone you're going to be seeing very often, uh, twice a day for the most part, uh, for four years. So it really would be beneficial to you to get to know them uh, and share with them what you're concerned about. Share with them the change, uh, changes that you're experiencing and the struggles maybe that you're having. They can often help you to work through that. They can help you uh, to learn how to, to deal with the things that, uh, that are getting you down or uh, getting in your way or that you're struggling with. Good morning, Tigers, and welcome to a new school year. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mrs. McCullough, the assistant principal. And as we begin a new school year, I want to remind all of you of what your primary job here is, and that is to learn. And as educators, it is our job to ensure that students have a distraction-free environment in their classrooms. With those efforts in mind, we have revised our cell phone policy for this school year. Starting today, cell phones and any other personal electronic devices must be turned off and kept out of sight during class time. Cell phones can only be used before and after school, passing time, during lunch in the cafeteria, and during focus in privilege areas only. If your cell phone is visible or you use or attempt to use your phone during class time, you will be required to give your device to the teacher. The cell phone will then be turned into the main office where you can pick it up at the end of the day. For second offenses and any others after, your parent or guardian will be required to pick up your phone. Please remember that having your phone or electronic devices at school is a privilege. Therefore, additional violations could result in having your cell phone privileges restricted completely. Another change this year is that during the lunch period where you are in class and during focus, we'll be having what's called an academic lockdown. This means that students will not be able to leave their classroom on a hall pass for any reason unless they are escorted by office personnel. Many of you are familiar with this kind of lockdown as we have implemented it during final exams. Again, the intention behind this change is to limit distractions during the school day and preserve an academic setting in the building. A new school year brings excitement as well as some new changes. If you have any questions on any of this, please talk with your advisor or see me or Mr. Chambers. I wish all of you a great start to the school year. Good morning, I'm Paul Ricken and I serve as a co-advisor for the Student Senate with Eli Young Thunder. The Student Senate was established in 2004 and serves as a voice for our students in this school. If you think about our school, it really is a microcosm of the larger society. We have a lot of different people here with diverse points of view. Everyone's voice is important. I'm here today to explain an important change that will be in place as we get going uh, in early September. Each of you starts each school day with an advisor uh, and a small group that you get to know throughout the year. Within the next two weeks, you will be selecting an individual from your advising group to represent you on the Senate. This person will have two primary responsibilities. First, they will represent you at our general Senate meetings that will take place on the fourth Thursday of each month during morning advising. 
And second, they will be responsible for communicating back to you what's going on within the Senate. Anyone is eligible to seek a position on Senate. If there are two or more students within your advising group that want to serve on Senate, your advisor will supervise an election within your group. Our first meeting will be on Thursday, September 28th, so elections will need to be taken care of prior to that time. From our group of 30 plus senators, we will be electing an executive committee of officers that will guide our group throughout the year. We believe this change will make our Senate more relevant to the entire student body. We encourage a cross-section of students to be involved. One note of caution, do not seek a position on Senate if you are not willing to be a responsible communicator. You will need to be with it when it comes to reading emails, for example, and keeping track of what's going on. Please do seek a seat on Senate if you are a person that has good ideas, wants to be a positive leader in our school, and is willing to put some time into that. Thanks for listening today, and have a great start to your school year. So we, as you know, students, we have many new people in the building. We have new staff. We have freshmen, we have students transferring in, students coming back to Black River Falls. But we have two very special students with us this year, as we often do. We have a couple of students from overseas. These exchange students have taken a risk to come to a place that is completely unknown to them, where they know no one, they have no relationships with anyone here, and they've jumped on a plane recently flown into the United States and come here to our beautiful town of Black River Falls. Now just imagine you getting on a plane today, flying to a country where you don't speak much of the language, maybe a little bit, landing and being picked up by strangers who take you to their house and show you to a little bedroom that will be your home for nine to ten months. So, can you tell me uh, your name, where you're from, uh, and um, how old you are? Uh, 저는 한국에서 온 한국 강원도 원주에서 온 김남훈이고요. 어, uh, 저는 한국 나이로 18살입니다. I I came from Korea in Gwangju. Uh, I my name is Namhun Kim and I'm Korean age, I'm 18. Can you tell me why you decided to come to the United States to go to high school for a year? Uh, um, 저는 미국에서 다양한 문화와 다양한 사람들을 만나서 uh, 많은 것을 배우고 싶었습니다. I want to learn a lot of a lot of cultures and I want to meet a lot of friends and a lot of people and I want to learn something from them. Can you tell me what, uh, when you came to America, uh, what were you most afraid about? Or what were you most nervous about when you came? What things were you unsure of? 가장 걱정됐던 것은 문화의 차이와 그리고 어, 그런 학교, 학교와 가정의 생활 같은 것이 가장 걱정됐습니다. I, I worry about difference between Korean Korean culture and American cultures and also school cultures also and family family culture yeah what were you most excited about what do you what do you most want to do or learn while you're in the United States what's something that you're really excited to do 제생, 제가 생각하기에는 미국 학교는 한국 학교와 다르게 좀더 활기차고 다양한 활동들이 있는 것 같습니다 저는 그래서 그 점이 가장 기대됩니다 I think American schools almost active than in Korean school, so I'm I'm looking forward their 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 activities and their yeah their uh, cultures. Is there a, uh, a place, a city, or a country, or a place that you went with your family that you enjoyed the most? 저는 이번 2월 달에 
저희 가족과 코타키나에 코타키나에 가서 코타키나 말로에 갔었습니다. 그곳은 자연 자연 환경이 되게 아름다웠고 가족과 함께 보내기 조, 좋았습니다. 음, yeah, um, this year maybe February I went to uh, Kota Kinabalu in Malaysia. Their their environment and their nature is really nice. <laughs> When you finish your year in Black River Falls, mm -hmm. what are your plans for after after Black River Falls and then beyond into the future? 먼저 대학교를 졸업한 뒤에는 어, 제 꿈인 사업가나 아니면은 경제와 관련된 직업을 갖고 싶습니다. After finish this school or after finish university, I want I want to make my I, I want accomplishment accomplish my dreams that to be a businessman or work 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 is Relate with economic. Yeah. Can you tell me what your name is and where you come from? I am Elvira and I come from Denmark. My name is Elvira and I come from Denmark. And where do you live in Denmark? I live in Copenhagen, which is the capital. I live in Copenhagen. Copenhagen, which is the capital. How many people are in your family? Um, soup. Okay, and can you tell me um, about your family? Jeg har to storebrødre, en stor søster og en lille bror og mine to forældre. I have four siblings: a younger brother who's 11, an older brother who's 21, another older brother who's 23, and a sister who's is 27. What was your most memorable vacation that you took and where was it and what were some of the best memories you have of that vacation? Hmm. Jeg tror det var da jeg var i London med min skole. Så det var rigtig sjovt at være sammen med så mange i byen. Um, I went to London with my school and it was really fun to be that many people in a very big city and walk around. So yeah. What What were you most afraid of when you decided to come and when you came to the United States? Um, jeg var mest bange for ikke at passe ind, fordi det er en meget anden kultur, og jeg, yeah. I think it was fitting in because the culture is different. So I, yeah, that was, I was worried that it would be difficult to fit in. What were you most excited about when you decided to come when you arrived? Også kulturen. Faktisk det er sådan det samme, fordi at det er en ny kultur, og det er super spændende at opleve. I think I was also most excited about the culture, because it's an amazing experience to like come here and live in a totally different place and experience a lot of new things. Okay. What do you, what would you like to do later on when you finish school, go back to Denmark and finish school? What would you like to become? Um, like jeg har ingen idé om, hvad jeg vil arbejde som, men når jeg kommer hjem, så skal jeg tage tre år mere i skole. Uh, hvor jeg så derefter kan prøve at finde mig en uddannelse. Um, when I come home, I'm gonna do three more years of school, and then after that, I can take an education, but I don't know what kind of yet. So. Um, it's okay to struggle. Everyone does. We all have challenges. Uh, every new year is a change for me. I still haven't made it out of high school yet, um, and uh, I always have new challenges and new things to, to look forward to each year, but also uh, that I have to struggle with and, and I have to look for help for. So uh, I want you to be uh, a group of students this year who really embrace that change, build good relationships with each other. Uh, and as always, I want you all to remember to always be respectful, always be responsible, and always be safe. Have a fantastic 2017-2018 school year.